manufacturing of goods. Okay. So here we just like to let's just define then discuss about the legal nodes. So in classification, there are used in classification such as uh, there are used in classification for the section notes, chapter notes, and heading notes and subheading notes. I forgot the heading notes here in the slide. Firstly, there is an inclusion or coverage in the legal notes. It is defined to enumerate the goods that are what are included. Generally, you what is the meaning of inclusion? Yun lang rin naman yung ibig sabihin niya sa tariff nomenclature. Nothing so special. Here's just an example. You can see uh, this note on the section notes as for the live animals which states that any reference in this section to a particular genus or species of an animal, except for the context otherwise requires, includes a reference to the young of that genus or species. Um, for example, if the, if the horse is classifiable under 0101, then that of the baby horse, I forgot the name of the baby horse or the other name for baby horse, then that that also is classifiable under 0101. Okay. As for the dog, kung saan man naka uh, ang HS code ng dogs, then puppies are also classifiable under that of the dogs. Okay. Uh, one example, uh, another example would be tiger or lion. Then the description for the cubs are also under that of the tiger or lion. Okay? So, pag may gantong description, you have to be, uh, you, well, you have to be familiar, not really just, not really memorized. So, you just have to be careful and aware of the legal notes provided in the section notes. So, that's for the inclusion. Sir, ano po yung okay. exception na naka-provide po na? Except where the context otherwise requires po. Ano po ibig sabihin? Kumbaga, if the if the context provided in the heading is specific, kumbaga, kasi yung, for example, yung sinabi ko ng uh, lions, kung wala namang another subheading for the cubs, then you will classify cubs under that of the lions or the tiger. Kumbaga, yung other otherwise requires if it is specifically indicated, kumbaga yung that of the genus or young of that genus is specifically indicated anywhere in the heading or subheading, then you will classify it to that heading. Pero kung hindi, you will classify them that of the adult of the genus or species. Okay, sir. Thank you, Pa. Am I clear? Clear, Pa. Sure. <clears throat> Another legal note is exclusion or meaning not covered. It enumerates the goods that are excluded or not included. For example, chapter 64, which covers footwear. However, note 1C to chapter 64 states that this chapter does not cover worn footwear of heading 6309, meaning worn used footwear. So even though a footwear is may be classified under 64, but you already know that it is used, then it is not classifiable under 64. You have to classify it to a separate heading or a separate chapter, which is that of chapter 63. Okay, so if you already see this legal note, then you'll have an idea, okay, on chapter 64, it only qualifies uh, brand new footwear. Otherwise, for use, uh, use or worn articles or footwear will be classified under Chapter 63 because it's a specific provide specifically provided in the legal notes and that of Chapter 63. Is it clear? <clears throat> clear.
Next one, in the legal notes, you'll also see definition. Okay. Sorry, you will not specifically see the word definition, okay? <laughs> this is just from what we have understand the legal notes are, okay? Because the legal notes, there are definitions provided for, a partic for particular goods covered by either chapter or section, chapter or heading and subheading. For example, in subheading note 1 to chapter 88, there describes for aircraft, spacecraft, and parts thereof that for the purpose of subheadings 8802.11 and 8802.40, the expression unladen weight means the weight of the machine in normal flying order, excluding the weight of the crew and the fuel and equipment other than permanently fitted of equipment. This is this kind of definition is common in very technical uh terms or that of uh jargon i think yeah jargon words yeah so some tariff nomenclature they provide this kind of definitions kasi hindi naman lahat have the understanding of on every industries that they encounter so so when you see unladen weight Anywhere in the tariff nomenclature, you just have to go back with this definition for you to understand what would be the coverage of the word unladen weight. Because if you'll just base or refer to your own understanding of what is unladen and weight, then you might incorrectly get the the real meaning of the word unladen weight as understood in the tariff nomenclature. Okay. Now, uh, let's move on to the rows of punctuations. If you don't have questions already on the legal notes, so we have three, inclusion or covered, exclusion or not covered, then definition. No more question? None, sir. None, None so far. Sir. Okay. So now let's move on to the rows of punctuations within the text of the ASEAN Harmonized Tariff Nomenclature. First, we have comma. Okay, for comma, it is, for comma, it is used to separate items or list of goods describing the heading and subheading text. It is also used to separate the list of items from the descriptor phrase or from a series of descriptors to which the items belong. This de these definitions is that the same of the actual definitions of what a comma is. Like, kumbaga, if you have a pause on your sentence we use comma it's the same thing as we use in the tariff nomenclature okay then for the semicolon it is used to indicate a full stop and that a good a good or list of goods separated by semicolons must be treated as distinct and separate from each other when considering tariff classification at the heading or subheading level again it's the same thing as we just generally describe in English, the word semicolon. Third one we have here, colon. It is used to indicate that further subdivisions will occur and the columns appear after the end of every subheading text, which has further breakdowns. So your keyword here. Sorry. Hello? Hello? Am I back? Nawala ata ako ng connection. Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay po. Nawala po ay sakit. Ayan, ayan. Okay. Uh, we're done with colon, right? will now have period. It is used to indicate a full stop in the heading text, which means only those products mentioned are included and nothing more. 
So you might be confused with the word full stop because it's also used. The word stop is also used in semicolon, but it's totally a different thing. Because the period is is understood as okay. This is the the last part of such sentence, while the semicolon is used as you expect another uh, another group of words to be described right after the semicolon. Same thing as how we use it in in English. So we have four four the punctuations that we use in the tariff nomenclature. We'll have a sample later after we understood the the theoretical part of the structure and the numbering system. Okay? For sections, sections are designated by Roman numerals from 1 to 21. So look at your book right now and you'll see the sections provided under uh, designated by Roman numerals. Then for chapters, the numbers or codes are laid down in an ascending manner. Ascending meaning increasing. 1 to 96. Okay. Then the, the first chapter is designated by two-digit number. For example, 10, chapter 10 provides serials. Okay. Then on the heading, the number or coding pattern is followed in the heading. So after the chapter, we'll have additional two digits. So we'll have four digits. It is understood understood as heading. Then there's also subheading. If you add additional two digits after the heading, it is defined as subheading. Subheadings in the HS or harmony system are up to six digits. Then subheadings in the ASEAN harmony tariff nomenclature are up to eight digits. Where you can see on the screen the examples. Headings in the AHTN that are not further divided are assigned 0, 0 at the end or after the fourth digit. Here's an example, 0, 2, 0, 5, that 0, 0, then that 0, 0 in HTN. But even though we put 0, 0 and 0, 0, we don't describe this at subheading 0, 2, 0, 5 because we know that this is only four digit. So this must be understood as just heading instead of subheading. Okay, HS subheadings in the HTN that are not further divided are assigned 00, zero after the six digits. Same thing as the first one in the heading. To incorporate tariff requirements unique to the Philippines, alphanumeric subheadings are created and incorporated in the CMTA and HTN. So you'll see also alphanumeric codes in the tariff nomenclature. Uh, I think right now we have A, B, C, D. Yeah, I think we have until D. But the most common one are A, B, C. A, sorry, A and B, rather A and B. To further subdivide uh, product codes. Uh, some agencies, sorry, not A, B, C, D pala. A and B pala ang familiar ako with the alphanumeric. So some agencies require this for statistics purposes because it would be easier for them to... Um, to get the information on uh, from the Bureau of Customs or the Tariff Commission by putting alphanumeric codes so that they would know that it is unique for such product that either they regulate or they restrict. Okay. Um, this is common on rice, which is previously regulated by the National Food Authority. This is also still common right now under the Bureau of Animal Industry for the meat importation, such as the chicken, the pork, the beef, for the imposition of um, uh, safeguard duty, either anti-dumping and countervailing. There's also these these alphanumeric codes are also used for the trade remedy measures. So if you're already familiar with the trade remedy measures, then you'll get to understand the alphanumeric codes uh, better. Okay. Uh, by the way, the alphanumeric codes are used to 
identify uh, quota as to the importation. So, like for example, 0301-9921-B, I A, rather, the description provided that only that of up to 100 metric tons of, uh, sorry, 100 kilograms of weight is classifiable under alphanumeric A. Then, uh, such product that exceeds 100 kilograms uh, of that, sorry, such product exceeds of the 100 kilograms will be classified under uh, alphanumeric B. You know? So, just to further subdivide according to the specific requirement of the tariff commission or the regulatory agencies. Sir, yung po ba yung may in-quota, out-quota sa HTN?